What's up everyone? You know what today is. Technique Tuesday, special edition coming at you. Why is it a special edition? I don't know, because I wanted to be a special edition. It sounds cool too. No, I'm just kidding. But for real though, I know you guys have been sticking with me for a long time now, several months. You guys have been on it, loyal. I love it. You guys are training hard. You guys are out there fighting and getting some W's. So what better way to celebrate a W than a dope celebration? So you're like, what do you mean? What do you mean a dope celebration, Wonder Boy? Well, we're gonna be giving you guys, showing you one of my favorites, a backflip. Cause y'all can't be getting W's without a good celebration. I'm gonna be teaching you how to do a backflip. Let's go. All right, first off guys, you gotta be smart. All right, I'm here at the gym, at the school, on a soft mat. That way if I do this and don't make it, I'm not busting my head and bleeding everywhere. Nobody likes a busted melon. So don't go out there and try this in your driveway, okay? Just saying, go somewhere safe to practice this. Now, number one, first thing you wanna do, is good position, as always. I'm here, my feet are spread apart. I like to have my feet alike, you know, about shoulder width. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand on my tippy toes like this, hands up in the air. As I bend my legs, I swing my hands down. As I come up, straighten my legs out, my, le my hands go up, just like so. Now, very simple, I go down and up. Get this right, I'm up on my toes, down and up. Next step, bring your knees up, swing down, bring my knees up to my chest, all right? That is a good drill to be able to make sure you're getting enough height, okay? Once I jump, as my hands come up, I bring my knees to my chest. I do this a few times for warm up when I practice too. So once you get that first, that, that upward movement, the next and hardest, probably the hardest part is to get your mind right to go backwards and upside down. So I'm gonna pull out something um, that everybody's seen before, it's called a crash pad. Well, some of you guys may not have a crash pad, but you may have a mattress or something at home, so use that. <laughs> so don't break your bed, maybe pull the mattress off or something, I don't know. But to convince yourself to go backwards. Now, I like to start at a squat position, and all I would do is give myself a little hop and I'd land on my back. This is how I taught myself how to do it. I would get here, and I would just go on my back, and then I would do it again, go a little bit higher. Uh, then, once you get used to that, then I start going back over a shoulder. Maybe not directly back, but I used to start off going over a shoulder. This is slowly how you can get used to getting yourself going backwards. So I would get here, and I would just kind of jump over my shoulder. Like so. Over the shoulder. Now as you get better at that, the higher you can stand up, the farther back you can go, directly over your head. Now, the next step is to try and go back, maybe land on your knee. So it goes something like this. Started off low, went all the way back, I landed on my hands and knees. Let me show you again. The hardest part is actually getting your mind right to be able to go all the way back. It's confidence, you gotta have confidence. That's what, that holds a lot of people back from doing it because they don't think they can get all the way over. It's scary, it is. Doing it slow like this will definitely help you build that confidence up, get used to your body going backwards, and eventually once you get that explosiveness in those legs, you'll be able to go all the way over. Whenever I started, I started going over my shoulder like you saw, then I started going directly back, still staying low on the crash pad because it's always safer, and then next thing you know, I started standing up even taller, but still I would land kind of on my feet and on my knees. So the steps kind of look like this, all the way over. See, I landed on my feet first, then I went down to my knees, a little bit safer. One thing that you want to do is keep your eyes open. As soon as I get over, I'm looking for the ground, okay? I look for the ground so I know where I'm at. Let me show you again the next step. Here, hands, squatting down, jumping back, my feet hit, then I drop down to my hands and knees. Just like so, seeing the ground. Now, once you get to this point, well, by then you should have the confidence to go all the way back. It's actually harder to cut a backflip on something soft like this because it, it, there's a lot of give, okay? So if you can do a backflip on a crash pad or your mattress, you can definitely do it on a more, on a more solid surface. So we're gonna get this out of here. Actually, I'm gonna have Tony get this out of here. Tony. Hustle, hustle, come on in. Get out of the way. Thank you. So next step, is the whole shebang, all right? Is the completion. Going all the way over. I like to grab my knees. When I go over, I like to grab my knees. It helps torque me around a little bit easier. Watch the knee grab, y'all. 
Now, once you get to this point, you can add a little flair to it here and there. You can do what we call the flash kick. And then you can even do what my personal favorite, the superhero landing. And when you're, when you're tired, let's say you knock the guy out in the fifth round, I usually do a flip after a good knockout. Not just a W, but it's gotta be a knockout. The super hairy landing, especially, let's say, let's say you're doing a five, five in a round war, and you knock him out of the end, you're too tired to get all the way over, it gives you a little bit of leeway. You don't have to get all the way over with the super hairy landing. You know what I'm saying? But it still looks cool. So there you have it. Keep getting those W's, and now have a dope celebration. So thanks for hanging out with me for this Technique Tuesday. Special edition coming at you. Hit that subscribe button, y'all. Hey!